Hi little Isaac, it's Grandma Suzanne and it's uh, Thursday night and I was really, really, really cold so I made a fire in the wood stove and it is so nice and toasty warm now and I'm going to show it to you if I'm able to angle the camera this way. Let's see if you can see. It's a really warm fire and it's beautiful. I mean, it's filling the whole thing up with light, but it's also one of the warmest fires I've made so that my multiple layers are becoming less and less necessary. But let's read. This book is called um, Over in the Wetlands, A Hurricane on the Bayou Story. It looks quite beautiful. Um, the drawings and everything. And you'll see a glare here, but on the rest of the pages it won't be so bad. On the back it says, angry clouds are gathering low, water churns in the undertow. A fish dive deep, they sense the squall, the hurricane stirs, the hurricane crawls. And they show a picture on the back fish underwater but again because of the glare of the shiny cover it's going to be hard to see so let's go on and read the pages inside where it's going to be easier to see there is a beautiful story now i haven't been at the beach in a hurricane thankfully because it could be pretty dangerous i've been there in storms and it's beautiful when they're sort of gentle storms i'm going to show you the pictures but first i'll read what's on each page over in the wetlands, where the silky mist weaves, dragonfly lights on a slender reed. Bending toward the bayou, she dips one wing, rippling the water as it creeps downstream. Gentle as a whisper, too soft to hear, a faint breeze hints that a storm draws near. Here's the picture. Let's see if we can see the dragonfly. She's right there. Right there. And since these, it's a long book, not physically, but I want you to see all this beautiful picture because it's really pretty. Really evocative sort of painting. I'm going to show you the picture and then read it. I think that might be better. Because then as I'm reading it, you'll have already seen what they're, what they're saying. It's beautiful, right? I really like this book. Over in the wetlands where the cypress rise, cotton tufts dot the coastal skies. Crab and her babies scuttle in the swells. The wind stirs moss like silent bells. And so when I held it up, I may have missed these crabs in the water. We have blue crabs in the Chesapeake Bay here where we near where we live in Maryland. Those actually look like blue crabs, but in the bayou I'm not sure. Along the shore the waves increase. Pelican scoop heron for the littlest beaks. Swirling the shadows, the spoonbill stalk, the cypress salted with an egret flock. So we're going to see pelicans. And there's one diving in the water. Herrings for the littlest beaks. Maybe they have babies. And spoonbills, and egrets. Over in the wetlands where the bayous run, alligator minds her restless ones. As she rises from the waters through the duckweed gauze, two clamor on her head, three writhe inside her jaws. So this is a mama alligator traveling or moving around with her babies who are um, on her on her body. The 
which is kind of fun to see in a way that three, um, that three of them or two of them, no, three inside her mouth, two on top of her head. Alligators may be rough on their prey, but they're gentle with their babies. Mama Gator feels the coming storm, wants her baby snug and warm. She lumbers slowly toward her den and nestles her gatorlings deep within. Let's see how she does that. Beautiful picture. I've never seen anything like this. She's making sure that they're safe because she knows a storm is coming too. Animals are very wise about such things. That's how they survive. Angry clouds are gathering low. Water churns in the undertow. Fish dive deep. They sense the squall. The hurricane stirs. The hurricane crawls. So above the water, there'd be big winds and rain. But under the water, the fish are swimming. You can see them in the dark underwater. I guess the fish dive deeper when a storm is coming. Wind-whipped waves smash up debris. Turtles swim for safer seas. Dark clouds snarl, press down the skies. The hurricane grumbles, the hurricane rides. And in this picture, there's turtles swimming for safer seas. It's not easy to be an animal in a storm. But the water does offer some protection, I bet. When I would be there, and the waves were really big, I would go underwater. Because underwater, it was calmer than where the waves were crashing on top. But since turtles are often on top, they're probably diving for safer places. Egrets cower between cattails from pelting sand and screaming gales. Frothing sea foam streaks the shore. The hurricane twists. The hurricane roars. That's got to be tough to be above the ground. Pelting sand and screaming gales. Frothing sea foam. Plus the wind, just intense wind. These are the egrets, those beautiful, graceful white birds. The long, thin beak, the long, long, thin neck, long, thin legs. I love egrets. And you'll see them even up here in Maryland. Marsh grass clutches the sandy loam. Tupelos crack, willows moan. Floodwaters rise, rain streams down, the hurricane drenches, the hurricane drowns. So look at this. It's just hard to see because it's nothing but dark, dark, and a storm, wind, and crashing rain. Let's see if I can, the glare is good, but it makes it hard to see. Pounding, wailing, hours endless, blasting, breaking, storms, relentless. When we had a hurricane up here, that's really what it was like. It just felt endless and frightening. Just to hear it and wonder what destruction and danger was going on outside. And in this, if I hold it at the right angle, I think you can see the sense of the driving, driving rain, the darkness pelting wind and rain. Makes you 
glad to be inside and safe with a fire in the fireplace and cozy and warm and safe. <laughs> over in the wetlands where the bulrushes dance, clouds fade over the great expanse. At last wind seat, at last winds ease to gentle breaths. The hurricane yawns, the hurricane rests. It's a wonderful feeling when the wind stops howling and, it, and the strong winds turn into a gentle breeze and the hurricane stops. Or as they say, the hurricane yawns, the hurricane rests. The sky starts to lighten. It's a wonderful feeling. And then you walk around and see what the damage is, if there's any. Black Bear shambles from her home. Waffles to her cubs, they're free to roam. Little ones tumble, their noses poke, ambling upon a down live oak. So there's a tree down, but since they're bears, not homeowners, you have to worry about it. They find it to be quite fun. Little bears getting to climb on a down tree. There's the log at kind of horizontal, much easier to reach. Over in the wetlands, where the sun sinks red through branch, though, okay, get it closer. Though branches dangle like broken threads and the edge of sea and earth's a blur, babies skitter to their mama, a swamp chauffeur. See the mama swamp chauffeur <coughs> because <coughs> she carries her babies around. Sorry, the pages are cautioning me while I get a drink to stop my cough. But that's beautiful. There's the birds, and there's the alligator with her babies moving them around like a chauffeur. Over in the wetlands where the stillness sighs, turtles glide under ruby skies. Pelicans cuddle in mother's wings. Mama nuzzles her gator lings. This is after the storm. The beautiful sunset. The mama alligator with her baby gators. The pelican with, with her babies. Beautiful, beautiful red water from the sunset. And the other animals, safer now, the turtles. There's a turtle seat safely just sitting on a, a log again. Those might be turtles, I'm not sure. Fish under the, under the water. Over in the wetlands, in the dead of night, dragonfly flits through the starry night. The swampland stretches all around, jumbled, peaceful, steady sound. Storm's over. Dragonfly's back. How does the dragonfly survive a storm? It's tiny, but they do. And in the distance, you can see a pelican on the I think that's a pelican on the log. Not a pelican, sorry, I regret. Look at the moon. And that's the end. I have to type this in again because I let the screen go. But we just have a few more minutes. But that's the end of this wonderful book and beautiful drawings. And it's um, We'll read this another time, but it's about the author's note about the storm and a map of where the bayou is that she's writing about in the hurricane. And this is about um, the animals in the book. So we'll read that another time. But anyway, that was a nice story about um, nature and nature when it's rough, but how afterwards it goes back to being calm and the animals know how to survive.
and so do we. I love you, little Isaac. See you soon. Stay safe and warm. Nice calm winds, thank goodness. Bye-bye.